So here you can see an example user interface that we built in LabVIEW. This is a LabVIEW executable, and we built it in conjunction with our alliance partner DMC here in the Americas, and they're one of our um, preferred and approved integrators for the battery test system. So in this user interface, you can see examples of some of the functionality you can implement for controlling user access or giving different user profiles, customizing a user interface with different measurement data and test station status, showing uh, history and live data, as well as a sequence window, which pulls in the test stand sequence and allows you to build a library of devices and sequences that you can run on those devices. So in the settings tab, you can see I can um, select to build a real hardware configuration and I can programmatically pull in which types of devices, which power supply, which thermal chamber, which cycler setup I have, and quickly reconfigure a test cell this way, as well as look at which test stand sequences I allow to run on different types of hardware and different devices under test. So for packed up A, I only have um, this multi-cycle drive test permissible. For pack B, I have a couple other tests uh, run or set up as examples. And I, for this virtual demo, I am using simulation models, which we'll take a look at in Veristan in a moment. So if I go back to the main screen, you can see, let's take a look at pack type A. Let's go ahead and run the multi-cycle drive test. It pulls in the sequence here in this window from test stand. And if I click the run button, it will start the test and start the test sequence executing. So right now I'm initializing my battery management system. It goes through some setup steps like initializing the cycler, closing the contactors, balancing all the cells, checking for alarms. And then it goes back to this main section right now. Uh, it's at a step to charge the battery to 100% state of charge. So you can see the pack state of charge here slowly increasing. Once this gets to 100%, we'll be able to proceed and continue with the rest of the drive cycle. And you can see a graph of what's going on with the pack and the cycler voltage and current respectively on this uh, chart up here. So we can uh, hang out for just a second. We're almost to a full pack state of charge. When we get there, you'll see the uh, indicator progress. And now we're going through the different UDDS and highway and steady state uh, drive profile sections. And so this is a multi-cycle drive test where it'll cycle through multiple of these drive cycle segments before uh, closing out, cleaning up the test. This is pretty much it for the functionality of this example LabVIEW built operator interface. One more thing that we did because this is a virtual demo is we uh, included the ability to simulate faults. So what would happen if you threw a cycler fault or a power supply or duct fault, something wonky went on with your device during the test or with your thermal chamber. So you can just pick different from these different simulated faults and you can trigger an alarm. That alarm should say, okay, something happened. It triggers a fault, the sequence stops, and you have options from test stand to handle that however you see fit. So we're gonna go ahead and run the cleanup. The test is gonna stop with an air recorded here, and it's gonna finish out the cleanup so that you can exit and shut down your test gracefully. And then from this UI, I can reset the fault, and I could go ahead and run again. So that's pretty much it for the example user interface. Again, this is something that uh, as a customer you could build or you could contract with one of our alliance partners to do some integration work to build a custom user interface uh, expressly aligned to your needs for your test application. So let's go ahead and exit out of here and let's take a look at the underlying software, what really makes the BTS system software valuable from a workflow optimization standpoint is really the connections between Veristand, which is a real-time test software for running models and executing models connected to your I.O., 
and uh, connecting that to test stand, which is a test executable for uh, test scripting, running those test scripts and reporting. So let's go ahead and take a look at Veristand. Um, in Veristand, you can see the concept of a screen or a user interface as well. This is the toolkit demo that ships with the battery test system software. And you can see here that you have a uh, set of indicators and graphs as well as different tabs for looking at the DUT, the thermal chamber, the power supply, the battery recycler. Again, this is all user configurable and user customizable. We also have what's called the System Explorer, which you can access from uh, the left over here. And the System Explorer basically takes you through the system definition file, how your system is set up, what is uh, set up and mapped, what hardware, what I.O., and what channels are all mapped in your system. So this is where the battery test system software team built out custom devices and different functionality that is included in the software, like an embedded data logger, like a black box recorder that allows you to capture high-speed data around specific events, uh, things like being able to, um, with System Link, publish tags directly up to System Link from your um, test stand and Veristand setup. So a lot of these custom devices were built explicitly for the battery test system workflow. Uh, if you look here, you see simulation models. And so Veristand has the ability to import and run models in real time. And so that's nice because you don't have to be connected to a test station to develop your test scripts. You can just point your uh, test scripts and your test stand and Veristand project at the simulation models. And here you can see models defined for the battery, uh, BMS, the cycler, or power supply, basically all the equipment and the DUT that you need to be able to run and execute your test script. And these models have imports and exports in place of the actual I.O. that you would map in a real test system. Um, there's uh, a bunch of uh, hardware uh, definition here that you do in the System Explorer. And you can also map those hardware I.O. channels or those model imports and exports to aliases. And so these aliases really allow you to map your system I.O. and then create an interface to the rest of the system. So like your test stand scripts and sequences so that when you change the underlying system definition, by, for instance, swapping out the models and swapping in a real BTS measurement rack with a bunch of I.O., you don't need to change anything that you do with your test stand scripts or your tests. Um, the alias is once you map the new real hardware I.O. in and you associate that real hardware with an alias, the aliases are what is referenced by the rest of the system, and so you're good to go. You don't need to do any other... Uh, reconfiguration. So that allows you to swap in and out equipment, reconfigure test stations quickly, and get back up and running. So with that, that's uh, the System Explorer for Veristand. You can see uh, the example screen that you could build out to provide interaction to the test system from Veristand if you so desire. Um, I can go ahead and once I close out of the System Explorer window, I can go ahead and deploy the project. So this will deploy all the settings and changes I made to the Veristand engine, which runs in real time on the Compact Rio controller in the BTS measurement rack. And it's a real time operating system which executes deterministically, which is great to have for these long-term, long-duration tests. It's very reliable and can execute long-term tests better than you can with like a Windows operating system which is at the mercy of system updates and virus scans and things like that. So you can see that my system has deployed. You can see data updating on um, the graphs. Well, nothing's really happening because we're not running any tests right now. Um, but this is the, the IO and the system is up and running and ready for test scripts to run. And so if I go ahead and minimize uh, Veristand, I can go over here to test stand and I can look at let me just go ahead and move this over just a little bit. And just, you know, so you can see something updating when I when I update test stand. So this is test stand. 
Testing is where you define the test scripts. And so this is the same multi-cycle drive test that we saw from the lab view interface earlier. Uh, you can see the same set of steps. And I can actually execute the same test sequence here from the test executive, from test hand. And it will go ahead and run the, uh, the steps and execute the test here from this environment. And you can see the same um, setup that was pulled into the lab view VI. And you can see the indicators actually changing in real time in Veristan in the screens here as well because I'm executing the tests over here and these systems are connected through the aliases and through the variables and test scripts running. So I'm, I'm actually going through the same uh, set of sequences for the multi-cycle drive test. You can see the, the data updating, all the values updating here um, in Veristan. If I go back to test stand, you can also see, in addition to running test scripts and sequences and controlling test execution in test stand, you can also automatically generate reports that are customized to your needs. And so this is just an example report that shows all the different variables and metadata uh, that makes the report searchable. And you can see all the different um, status uh, you can see actually I'm actually running this uh, test right now and once it's completed you can export these test results and at this point I'm going to jump out of test stand and Veristan and show you the connection to system link for systems and data management. So from Veristan we can publish system link tags which is associating all the variable data with a, um, a container or device that allows you to publish it from your client, which is either your test station, or in this case, since I'm running virtually, my development machine on the desktop, and lets you publish it up to the server. And then you can also publish the test reports as well. And we'll take a look at how those are accessible on the server. So I have my system link client set up and I'm connected to the server. And so you need a system link client running on every connected test station or machine. Then I go to uh, System Link up here in the, um, in the browser. And so this client, in my case, is running on uh, Amazon Web Service in a virtual machine, but you can set it up to run locally on a, a lockdown server or machine. It's very configurable for different IT use cases. So if I go ahead, I can log in uh, and you can have different uh, user levels of login that have different permissions in System Link as well. I'm going to go ahead and log into System Link. And you can see I have a, a variety of different options available with different um, plugins and different, um, you, know, you can see my uh, test sequence pass from test stand. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. I'm not going to run another test right now. So from uh, System Link, you can see the Systems Manager. This is for systems management. It lets you look at all the different devices, uh, sorry, all the different systems connected. So if you're running a test lab with a bunch of different machines and a bunch of different test systems connected, you can see all those systems and you can see a bunch of usage data about those systems, things like alarms, uh, memory and CPU usage, different jobs, and you can click into any one of these tiles and then you can actually um, see information about the different machines connected and you can manage uh, status of these machines. You can dive in to the settings. There's a bunch of different things you can do to remotely manage the connected and running machines once these machines are approved and part of the system. If I go back to the systems dashboard, uh, the first time you connect a client, you have to approve that machine and, and actually have one pending system to approve. This is probably one of our BDMs uh, wanting to have access actually to run virtual demos and to connect to the server uh, either from Detroit or from uh, Munich or from Tokyo or from uh, a city in China. So we have four BDMs who will all be running tests and publishing data to the same system link server uh, and getting the machines up and running to run virtual demos with folks like you. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that machine. Oh, looks like uh, the request to approve the system failed. So I probably don't have the permissions because of the way I logged into the system 
uh, to approve that machine. So that's an example of the, uh, the user permissions. So if I were to go here and log out, and I can go log in as an admin instead, or as a DMC user, um, I may have forgotten my admin password. So as a DMC user, they should also have admin privileges. If I go back to the systems dashboard, I should now be able to approve that pending system, I think. Let's go ahead and approve it. And you can see that error that was thrown earlier is not showing up and that system is now approved. So that system can now, as a client, publish data up into system link and one of our BDMs is going to be very happy. All right, so if I go back to the main screen in systems link, in system link, you can see a bunch of different tools. Um, you can look at tags. So all the tags that are being published by the various systems from Veristand, from that um, custom device. You can see all the tags in this tag viewer. And you can see all the different systems here, the current value of that tag, um, some different data in the last time it was updated. So you can see a bunch of different systems, there's a bunch of different tags, and there's tools in System Link to, um, to filter and sort all these 700 odd tags that I have available in, on the server right now. You can also look at uh, files. Now, I'm not gonna go through every functionality of System Link, that would be a whole nother demo in and of itself. But I wanted to show you the file viewer because this is the um, place where you can see from test stand, I'm publishing the reports that I've been generating with test stand and automatically uploading those to system link so that anybody who has server access as a user can see test reports from all the test stations that are connected. And so all the test stations could be automatically publishing data and reports. I can click on the one that was just run and you can see uh, I can do a preview and I should be able to see the UUT report that uh, I was showing you in testing just a few minutes ago. And so this is a powerful tool, especially as you start getting beyond one or two test stations and you start getting into fleets of testers all running different equipment, different tests across distributed labs, potentially across different cities, different buildings, different continents. Um, even different countries, and they can all be connected and accessed through this same server setup from a, a web browser. I'll show you, um, there's a couple other tools that we could get into, but I think the last thing is you can also have the ability to write uh, custom user interfaces in System Link. You can, through LabVIEW Web VIs, develop an application that allows you to customize the way that people interact with and view data about the systems that you have connected. So again, working with DMC, we built an example uh, tester dashboard, and you can see our old branding. We need to update this. Um, this is from a few months ago. But in this tester dashboard, uh, I can see a couple different systems available, and then I can see uh, what the current state of that system is. And so um, this is the machine I just approved. There's a couple of virtual machines. There's my machine and others. I'm not running a test right now, so this information is not updating. Um, if I run this test again, we'll see if I can get those real-time results updating in this, uh, in this panel. I'm not sure my machine is registered correctly, but we'll, this is the beauty of real-time demos. We'll, we'll give it a try and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead this is gonna run through and start executing a test. And look at that, you can see the, uh, the variables uh, updating in real time uh, through my browser. And so uh, I don't have to be on the same machine again. Anybody with user access anywhere with internet access uh, could log in and see what's happening in real time with my virtual test that I'm running for you right now as a demo. And then you could look at the fleet dashboard and you could see all the different testers uh, configured, the status of those testers, when they were last updated, et cetera. All of this, this information is completely customizable. This is just an example that we built to show um, 
some basic functionality, give you some ideas of what is possible with um, custom application development and system link with LabVIEW Web VIs to customize an interface for your users and for people who have an interest in the status of your systems. And you can see uh, I need some more uh, RAM and a faster CPU, apparently. All right, let's go ahead and close down System Link. So with that, you saw um, a demonstration real quickly of the battery test system software in operation, uh, an all virtual demo running, um, and this is possible using the, the model integration feature in Veristand to run models and to execute those models, map those uh, model parameters to aliases, which are then accessed in Teststand. We're running Teststand scripts, and those Teststand scripts are um, also accessible, both the, the variables and the scripting calls um, for testing are available in LabVIEW, and that's what let us write that uh, custom uh, local interface with a LabVIEW executable. And we've tied uh, all the systems and data management together in the BTS uh, through an optional system link connection. So that's kind of a lot to go through, but we've tied together all this application software from NI and customized it, wrote all the glue logic and the interconnects and the plumbing to make it really impactful for optimizing battery test workflows.